What's going on everyone, my name's Tenebris and we just got our second update to Nightingale. As these are the early updates, they aren't introducing much new content, but I think it's still good for us to go over these updates as we go along through the game, both big and small. So today, we'll quickly read through the patch notes, and if there's anything we've got to figure out, we'll do so in future videos. With patch 0.1.2, we got a number of fixes that have been widely reported by the community. The removal of ingot folding and various other methods of boosting stats with reclaimed items, as well as a ton of quality of life changes. So let's dive into the patch notes proper here. Firstly, for our progress blockers. The team was able to address an intermittent crash related to audio and VFX volumes. They fixed a rare crash when purchasing items from an essence trader. They fixed a rare crash handling audio events. They implemented a speculative fix to a rare server crash when completing quest objectives. There are fixes for a handful of crashes to desktop. And overall, these crash fixes improved the overall stability by 10%. For some building quality of life improvements here, additional small structures can now be copied, moved, and destroyed via build mode. For our controls, we had a small rollback here where the scroll wheel reversal from the previous update has been reverted back to its original state. Now for NPCs, creatures should no longer spawn into inaccessible areas and instances of the Bastille of Might arena. Sun Giants no longer unlock a deprecated feature, being the Sanctuary Focus. Removing the recruitable marker on the map no longer dismisses the NPC when using a gamepad controller, a huge fix. And lastly, a character at Nelly's camp no longer has an accidental wardrobe malfunction. For the player character, climbing picks should no longer cause the player model to vibrate, which is a great fix. It could be a pretty jarring experience your first time climbing in this game. Quick clicking the invite button should no longer lock people out of parties. They resolved a bug related to character faces causing unintentional bumpiness and the lighting. Faces should look smoother as a result. Eyes for some pre-site archetypes should now more closely resemble their original art. And then they fixed cases where a player's respite could be unintentionally set to the watch. If a player's respite realm is detected as the watch, the player will be relocated to their first abeyance realm when relogging into the character. For our resources, a simple but necessary fix, we can now craft the charm braid with the mind aspect. For some UI fixes, the Essence Trader Shop offers should now expand and collapse as they used to, and the Dragon's Horde Eminent Miner card's description now match its in-game effects. Now for some proper game changes, in the art and visual department, the Swamp Apex Vault is now brighter. For the player character, we got a ton of changes here. Uh, players can now quick stack items into chests, which is a much requested feature. Stamina now starts to regen as soon as a tool swing is finished, as opposed to having a short cooldown. They reduced the dodge stamina cost from 15 to 10. They slightly reduced dodge distance from 5 meters to around 4 meters to make it more usable in combat. No enemy tracking while dodging, and knockback immunity while dodging. And a big change here, no airborne stamina regen. Uh, One-handed weapons now consume 3 stamina per swing, down from 4. And two-handed weapons now all cost 6 stamina to swing. They pretty much all did except for axes before. Uh, they have the stamina cost of climbing, swimming, and gliding. They removed the stamina cost on blocking hits. They significantly reduced stamina regen while blocking. And lastly, using the help I'm stuck button should now always reset the player to the default starting location in the watch. Firstly, for our resources, a great fix here. Uh, repair costs now adjust based on the damage percentage of your items, so you can now repair all without wasting essence. Next up, Lustrous Ink can now be used as Vibrant Ink. And then lastly, they removed reclaimed recipes that allowed for stat stacking. Now for some UI changes, they added existing hazards to the Biome Realm card descriptions, and active minor cards now show in the F2 debug screen. 
And lastly, for miscellaneous, they fixed an exploit that was allowing players to cheat the stack count when dropping items, and additional activities now reset the AFK timer, such as fishing and starting and cancelling crafting. As a final note here, items previously made with reclaimed materials will not be affected at this time for game stability reasons, but are being evaluated for future updates. So there we have it, a rather big update for our second patch. Some great fixes in here, and hopefully some further under the hood stuff we'll find out as we go along. If you've been playing the latest update so far, I want to know, what's your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comments down below, and maybe consider subscribing to stick around for more Nightingale. But for now, thank you for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.